Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome to 2018 and welcome back to my C++ series. And today we're going to be talking all about the auto keyword. So in C++, so far we've been using types for all of our variables and basically all of our data. So we've got types like integers, doubles, you know, strings, classes, structs, all of this kind of stuff, pointers. Instead of using all of that, there's actually a way to let C++ automatically deduce what the type is of data that we're either creating, so by initializing a variable, or simply kind of assigning from one variable to another. So what I mean by that is, suppose that we have a string, we've created a string, and then maybe we have a function in our class that returns a string. We know that the type that it's returning is string, and of course, so does the compiler. So when we actually assign that return type, that return value to, a, to, to like a local variable in our current function, instead of us having to actually type string, you know, name a variable equals get name or something, we can just type auto, and then our variable name, and it will automatically work out what the type is supposed to be. Now, this lends itself to a few good things and a few bad things, and we're gonna kind of discuss that today. This is gonna be more of an open discussion because the actual con like, the actual concept of auto is really, really simple, and it's not. there's not gonna be much point, I think, in me just taking like 10 minutes talking about what auto actually is, because once I show you, you'll be, you'll be like, oh, okay, there's not much to it really. And I mean, we can use auto in like, in like a few kind of complicated ways, but uh, for the most part, it is very simple. So what this kind of ends up becoming, it's one of those episodes where it's like, well, you can use it like this, but you probably shouldn't go too kind of overboard with it. Um, and we'll definitely be discussing that kind of stuff. So anyway, let's just jump into some code and take a look at some examples of how auto actually works, where you can use it and all that stuff. So if I make a variable here and I'll just write int a equals five, that's my variable done, pretty simple stuff. What I can now do is instead of like, I don't know, creating another, like let's just say this is a very simple example and probably meaningless, but let's just say that I want to create another variable called b, which has the value of a, right? Well, instead of typing int, I can just type auto. And what this will actually do, if I hover my mouse over B in Visual Studio, you'll see it actually says int B because it's automatically worked out, okay, well, you're assigning B to B A. So what I'm going to do is automatically work out that, well, A is an integer. So therefore B is also an integer. And I can kind of print that uh, normally as, as if it was, well, anything really, because it's just a normal variable and that will all work fine. I can also kind of replace this int here with auto as well. And if I hover my mouse over this, you'll see it says in A. And the way that it kind of works that out is it says, well, five, if you just write a numeric kind of literal like this, it is automatically gonna be an integer. If I kind of type in an L or something here, then you can see that it actually makes it a long. Um, and if I was to do 5.5F, of course, it's going to become a float. And if I wrote, I don't know, a string like Cherno like this, you can see it becomes a const char pointer. So basically you can see that I can, I can, I kind of have two things going on here. First of all, I don't need to care so much about the type. This is where C++ can kind of, kind of turn into a weakly typed language where instead of being a strongly typed language where we always specify this is an int, this is a float, this is a string, this is whatever class, this is whatever type. Um, we can just kind of write auto everywhere and we don't have to deal with types at all, like ever. Um, that's one thing it can, it can become, but also it means that we can kind of in our code, this actual thing, if we want this to change, we don't necessarily have to change the type ever. Like this left side of this kind of equation here, left side of the equal sign, this stays auto A all the time, no matter what this is, no matter if it like is like some kind of null pointer or an actual value or a string or whatever it could possibly be, or just a single character, we don't have to change any of this. So this lends itself to two things. And we're going to kind of discuss this for the rest of the episode, probably. And that is, well, if I have auto, then do I really need to ever write any types? Can't I just use auto everywhere? Um, and that's a, that's like, it's a valid question. I'm not going to pretend it's not, but it's also, it also comes down to a matter of style. And also you need to think about what the benefits 
and what the setbacks are for kind of that style of programming. And we'll definitely get into that. But anyway, let's, let's actually dive into some examples where auto might be useful and why, like how I use auto and all of that. So going back to our kind of simple example here, we've established that auto can basically be used to automatically deduce what the type of, of a variable is. Now, in this case, we're, we're just assigning it immediately here. It's clear to us what this type is. So I would probably just write the type because that makes the code a lot cleaner. Now, suppose that I had a function that returned a string and it's called get name, and it may be return cherno. So if I have something like this, um, and I, I then want to actually store that string as a local variable, I would need to type std string, and then maybe name equals get name, just like that. But what I can do, of course, is instead of this, I can use auto name equals get name like that. And now this name will automatically be deduced to be an std string, of course, because we're assigning it to the value of get name, which returns a string. Uh, and we don't actually have to write std string at all. What this also means though, is that if I over here go and change this type to like char get name or something like that, that gets updated here. So I don't actually need to change my code twice, which can be quite useful because if I start changing my API, then client side, you can see no code has changed. Inside this main function, nothing has changed. However, I've changed the return type up here. If we were using an std string here, we would actually need to change the return type or we, we would need to change this somehow because we're returning a char and we're just assigning it to an SED string. Now, technically speaking, this in this example, it would work because there is an implicit constructor for string that actually takes in a char pointer, but the whole thing kind of changes because like I can call name.size or something like that uh, with this thing. Uh, but if I was just using auto, you know, that's not something that would work for this case, but if I went back to std string, suddenly, yes, it would. So that's kind of two sides of the coin, right? On one hand, it means that if I change my API, if I change the return type for get name to be an std string and I decide to maybe change it to a char pointer in the future, then client side, I don't need to change anything. That's great. I don't even know that the API has changed. But that's also a bad thing because I don't know that the API has changed and it might break code that relied on that type being a certain type. So you see there's two kind of, there's, it's, it's nice on one hand because you don't have to change any code, but you, that might break stuff for you and it might be harder for you to deal with. Whereas of course, if this was actually set to be an SCD string and I actually end up changing this, it's not going to break further down or whatever immediately this will just, well, in this case, it will actually work perfectly because it will actually convert it to be an SCD string. So this example is even more special because in this case, auto would actually break our code, whereas SCD string doesn't. But then again, also you might want it to be a char pointer. So this becomes like a huge kind of details kind of thing, right? Where it really depends on what you're dealing with. Anyway, I don't want to get too much into that. So for these cases, I would never use auto personally because I like knowing the type of my variables. If I'm just reading this code and I see stuff like auto name like that, I don't know what that is. I can, I, I, I have to either hover my, my mouse over this to ho and hope that Visual Studio's IntelliSense actually can tell me what the type is, or I actually have to go to the actual function and see what the return type is. That's a little bit annoying. I want to just be able to look at this code and see, oh, okay, name is a string, just like that, right? To me, that's a lot more readable and it's also less error prone because again, if the API changes, like, and, and the, and specifically the API changes in a way that breaks our code, that break won't go unnoticed and might even result in a runtime bug or something in the future, because our type is just magically changed. Maybe a little bit, maybe they're somewhat compatible, kind of like a char pointer is and a string pointer is, but what if I'm then later taking the size of that type, because I expect to serialize it or something like that, you know, that might destroy everything. So I would definitely not use it in this case. However, it is still useful. So let me show you a case in which it's a good idea to use auto. So suppose that I actually had a type that was kind of lengthy. So that, well, there's, there's two, I'll show you two examples to explain this. First of all, let's just start off with, maybe I have a vector um, of strings. And this is maybe just like, uh, I don't know, strings, okay? And I'm just going to push back, you know, apple, orange, and that'll be enough for now. Um, and then I'll also 
include vector to get access to that. Okay, cool. So I have two strings and instead, and for some reason, instead of like iterating over them normally, I want to print all of these things. Instead of iterating over them normally, I'm actually going to use an iterator. So what that would look like is for STD vector, STD string, colon, colon, iterator, um, I'll call it IT equals strings dot begin. And then over here we'd have iterator does not equal strings dot end and then iterator plus plus, right? And then maybe I do stdc out iterator, the value of the iterator like that. And if I run this program of mine, then of course I get all of the elements inside my vector printing just like that. Now iterators aren't particularly used much nowadays because, well, I mean they are, but they kind of, you'd probably use a for each loop or like a range based for loop for something like this. We will probably talk about iterators in a later episode, but bear with me for this example. So you can see basically what I'm what I'm trying to say is that this is the type, it's huge, right? Instead of writing this, I can just write auto and suddenly that kind of makes my code a lot more readable because I don't have to have this massive type. Here's another example of where we might have a massive type. Let's just say that I'm just making this up on the spot so don't think too deeply about this actual example. But let's just say I have a device manager, right? Which has maybe like a map. So we'll say std unordered map of std string to std vector. Maybe we have another class of actual kind of devices. So I'll just do that for now std vector device pointer um so we have like a map of strings to a vector of devices and these are our, our actual devices um and we'll say over here we'll have const the type which i'll just copy because it's huge uh we'll have that as, as a reference get devices return m devices Okay, I'm gonna make a const as well. Okay, so I'll, call, I'll come up here and I'll include unordered map, just like that. Okay, so there we go. We have this device manager of ours. Let's just go ahead and try and use this. So down here, I'll write device manager dm, then dm.getDevices. Now I want to assign this to something. So what I have to do, of course, is assign it to this massive type. And specifically, I want it to be a const reference. So I'll come down here and I'll write the type and then devices. Now, I don't even know if you can see that because that's such a long line of code. So I'll kind of maybe drop this down here. So this is the, this is the type, right? It's absolutely massive. Now what I could do, right? And what I might do in a situation like that is just alias the type either by using type def or using. So what I could write is using device map or something like that equals, and then this actual type like that. And what that would mean is that instead of writing this, I could just write const device map like that. And that's fine. Or you could also alternatively, if you prefer, and if you want to support, I guess, older code bases, you could also write type def the type and then device map like that instead of the using. Okay. So either way though, we end up with an actual type here that is a lot smaller and probably makes more sense. And you could probably even move this, whoops. And you can probably also move this using kind of type thing to actually be inside the device manager class so that when you include device manager, you also have access to this device map type. And that might be something I would do. However, if we don't want to go down that route, then of course we do have to actually have that entire type here, which gets very annoying. So this is another valid use case for auto in my opinion. Like it really, really helps with this. It makes it a lot smaller. Now keep in mind with auto, we still have to use reference. Okay, if we were to change this to be like something like auto devices like that without the ampersand, it's actually going to make a copy. So it's going to it's going to do the same thing as if I actually had std on auto map without the ampersand like that, right? So it will actually copy this entire map into a local variable. We want we don't want to copy it in this case, so we actually have to write const auto reference. So that's another thing to keep in mind with auto just because you might be returning a reference doesn't mean it's actually going to store it as a reference. If you don't write reference here, it's not going to store it as a reference and it will copy the variable. Okay. So those are kind of two real world examples in which I would probably use auto. Basically, if your type is just really, really long, right? If you, if your type is like int or string or something like that, then I would Never, I don't think I would, I would never use auto because it just makes the code less readable. It really doesn't serve any benefit in my opinion, but for long types like this, it could be extremely useful. Now, of course, 
getting into more complicated code bases and stuff involving templates and whatnot, there are cases in which you literally have to use auto and there's no way because you just don't know what the types are going to be. And that just becomes massively complicated. I personally prefer to just not get myself into code bases that are that complicated where you must use auto because it, because you just don't know what's going on and there's no way to know what's going on because that just becomes really, really messy and hard to deal with and hard to maintain and hard to explain to other people how that code actually works because you yourself don't fully understand how it works, of course, because it's crazy and it's magic. But anyway, all of that aside, um, the auto keyword is also used for things like trailing return types or just you can also use them for functions starting from C++14. Um, something like get name, you can actually get that to return an auto. Or even before that in C++11, you can use tra trailing return types just like that to actually determine the type. There's a bunch of things that you can actually do with auto that is we're not gonna talk about in this video because this video is specifically about auto as an actual type that we use for variables. Um, but that's pretty much it. Leave your thoughts as to what you think about auto and where and like where or why you use it in your code base. Leave a comment below. I'd love to get like a discussion started. I've told you my opinions. They're just opinions. Feel free to disagree with me and tell me why you disagree with me in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But to summarize, I basically only use auto if the type is huge and I for some reason don't want to using or type def like to create an alias for that type to make it shorter. But apart from that, I really just try and avoid auto because it makes most code, most code just harder to read and it takes longer to actually read and understand that code. Again, something like iterators where you have a long type, I think that's totally valid. All right, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. You can also help support the series by going over to patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge thank you as always to all of the supporters on there. These videos would not be possible without those people. So thank you so much. And next time, as, as usual, I have no idea what's going to be next in this series, but I should probably look at my list. And if you have any suggestions for what you would like to see next in this C++ series, please leave a comment below and I will see you next time. Goodbye.